Knot theory could explain why our universe contains solid matter. This is the ambitious new idea that was just put forward by a group of physicists published in one of the most prestigious journals in the field. Yes, it's crazy, but then again it isn't. It's an interesting idea. Let me explain why. If the universe contained equal amounts of matter and antimatter, these that have entirely annihilated each other briefly after the Big Bang, leaving behind nothing but light, why didn't that happen? What broke the balance and allowed all this to exist? The authors of the new paper say it's that quantum fluctuations in the early universe were so complicated they formed knots, and these knots made of pure energy, then fell apart into other particles, but somewhat more matter than antimatter. That the mathematics of knots may be closely related to particles isn't a new idea. More than a hundred years ago, some physicists, including Lord Kelvin, thought that atoms were tiny knots in the ether. This sounds absurd now, but at the time it made sense, because you see, for a mathematician, a knot has no loose ends. It's a closed pattern of a string that has multiple self-crossings. These knots come in different groups and sizes and have many relations among each other. And that, physicists thought back then, would explain the periodic table. Also, these knots couldn't easily be cut up so they would be stable. It was called vortex theory, the idea that the ether could tie itself into knots and make atoms. That didn't pan out, but now there is this group of physicists which says that, well, actually these knots can form from what physicists call a quantum field. These quantum fields stretch through space and time. That it's a field just means it's everywhere. These fields carry energy. The authors of the new paper now say that the energy of these fields can become very concentrated, essentially forming a string. Not a string theory string, just concentrated energy from those quantum fields. And if those strings happen to form a knot, that'll make them quasi-stable. This means they survive for some time and keep this energy concentrated, but they will eventually decay, like YouTube trends. So why do we care about such tiny knots of field energy? Because the early universe might have made enormous numbers of them. And when you fill the universe with something that behaves like matter even for a short time, it changes cosmic history. The authors propose that the universe went through a short, not dominated era. The knots acted like heavy particles, moving slowly, filling space, and storing lots of energy. After some time, they decayed and fell apart into other particles. And because they had stored so much of this Big Bang energy, they could have decayed into what's called a right-handed neutrino. These right-handed neutrinos then decay further and make more matter than antimatter. This is why their idea can explain why we have matter today. Now, many of you know that I think the matty-antimatter asymmetry is a pseudo-problem. This is because there is no reason why matter and antimatter should have been produced in the same amounts to begin with. Physicists postulate this problem into existence so that they can write papers proclaiming solutions. Maybe it was the X particle, or a Higgs triplet, or a metastable WIMP, or technibaryons. And the authors of of the new paper proposed two new scalar fields to make it work. Making up problems that don't exist and then trying to solve them is basically the physics analogy of digging holes just to fill them up. So why am I telling you about this anyway? It's because the idea that quantum fields can form these knots under certain circumstances is interesting in its own right. Forget about the early universe. We work with quantum fields in condensed matter physics, in quantum tech, in particle physics. These guys might be onto a much more general phenomenon there. Maybe not theory will even make a comeback as a theory of everything. I give this paper an 8 out of 10 on the bullshit meter. I think that the stuff about knots from scalar fields in the early universe is hair-raising. I don't believe this for a second, but I think the general idea has potential. If the universe started with a tangle of knots, 
maybe the Big Bang was a cosmic failure at gift wrapping. How does that work? Why is that so? If those are questions you also like to ask, you should really have a look at Brilliant. It's a great way to practice your problem-solving skills and your critical thinking. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. I found it to be a highly effective way to build up knowledge. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free. And if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.